imagine a dish so warm, so hearty that it seems to wrap you in a blanket of comfort on a chilly winter day. Picture a bowl of steaming hot creamy soup with chunks of tender chicken, vibrant carrots and peas, all melded together with a rich savory broth. This, my dear friends, is the magic of a classic chicken pot pie soup. It's the perfect way to kickstart our journey into the world of winter dishes. As the winter winds howl outside, nothing beats the warmth of a home-cooked meal. And what's more homely than a pot of chicken pot pie soup simmering on the stove? In this scene, we will delve into the art of preparing this ultimate comfort food. Step by step, we'll guide you through the process, from chopping the vibrant vegetables to browning the tender chicken, to creating a creamy, aromatic roux. You'll see how the soup comes together, how the flavors meld and grow richer as it simmers. We'll also share some tips and tricks to get that perfect consistency and taste, like how to make your roux just right, how to get your chicken perfectly browned, and how to make those pie crust croutons that are the perfect blend of flaky and crisp. So grab your aprons and let's dive into the world of comfort food, because there's nothing like a bowl of chicken pot pie soup to chase away the winter chills. The first winter dish we're exploring today is the chicken pot pie soup. This comfort food classic takes all the flavors you love from a traditional pot pie and turns it into a warming soup. Let's go through a step-by-step -step guide on how to prepare this heartwarming dish. Step one, start by sauteing your favorite vegetables in butter until they're tender and aromatic. Step two, add diced chicken and cook until it's beautifully browned. Step three, Sprinkle in some flour to create roux and cook it off to get rid of that raw flour taste. Step four, gradually pour in chicken broth and stir to create a smooth, creamy base. Step five, allow the soup to simmer until the chicken is cooked through and the flavors have melded together. Step six, to finish off, add some chopped pie crust and bake until they become crisp, flaky croutons. Imagine the creaminess of the broth, the succulence of the chicken, the crunch of the vegetables, and the flaky pie crust croutons on top. It's a dish that warms you from the inside out, making even the chilliest winter day bearable. Now, before we dive into our next dish, let's take a delightful intermission with a culinary quiz. This fun quiz will test your knowledge about winter comfort food. So, get ready to play along and see how much you really know about your favorite winter dishes. Question one, which country is known for its traditional beef and Guinness stew? A, France. B. Ireland. C. Italy. Take a moment to think about your answer, and the answer is B. Ireland. Beef and Guinness stew is a traditional Irish dish, perfect for those cold winter nights. Question 2. What type of rice is typically used to make a creamy risotto? A. Jasmine rice B. Arborio rice C. Basmati rice. Again, give it some thought, and the correct answer is B. Arborio rice. This Italian short grain rice is known for its ability to absorb liquid and create a creamy, delicious risotto. Well done to those who got the answers right. Now let's return to our winter comfort food journey with another mouth-watering recipe. Next on our list is the butternut squash risotto. Let's dive into how you can prepare this fantastic dish in your kitchen. Here's what you need. One, one medium butternut squash, peeled and one cup arborio rice three, four cups vegetable stock four, one onion, finely chopped five, one cup grated Parmesan cheese six, salt and pepper to taste seven, two tablespoons olive oil. Now let's go through the steps. One, preheat the oven to 425 degree F, 220 degree C. Toss the squash cubes in olive oil, season with salt and pepper, and roast them in the oven for 25, 30 or until tender. Two, in a large saucepan, heat olive oil over medium heat. Add chopped onion and cook until it becomes translucent. 3. Add arborio rice to the pan and stir it for a couple of minutes until the grains become glossy. 4. Gradually add vegetable stock, one cup at a time, stirring continuously until the liquid is absorbed before adding the next. 5. When the rice is tender and creamy, stir in the roasted butternut squash and Parmesan cheese. Season with and pepper to taste. And there you have it the sweet, nutty flavor of butternut squash in a creamy, rich risotto. The squash roasted to perfection blends its sweetness perfectly with the savory notes of the arborio rice and Parmesan cheese. Each spoonful is a warm, creamy delight that's sure to please on a cold winter's evening. As we transition from the butternut squash risotto to the hearty beef and Guinness stew, 
let's take a moment to explore the art of wine pairing. Choosing the right wine can elevate your meal, enhancing the flavors, and providing a more holistic dining experience. When it comes to risotto, a full-bodied white wine like an oaked Chardonnay can be an excellent choice. Its buttery notes complement the creaminess of the risotto, and its acidity can cut through the richness of the dish, providing a refreshing palate cleanser. On the other hand, our beef and Guinness stew calls for a robust red wine. A Cabernet Sauvignon, with its high tannin content, can stand up to the hearty flavors of the stew. Its dark fruit flavors will complement the deep, rich taste of the stew, while its acidity will help to balance the richness of the dish. Remember, wine pairing is a personal journey. It's about finding what works best for you and your palate. So don't be afraid to experiment and find your perfect pair. Enjoy the process and most importantly, enjoy your meal. Next, we'll dive into the detailed process of cooking the beef and Guinness stew. Stay tuned. Let's dive into the cooking guide for our third dish, the beef and Guinness stew. This is not just any ordinary, it's a culinary journey. Start by selecting a quality cut of beef. This will be the star of our stew, so ensure that it's top notch. Slow cook this to tender perfection. This process might take several hours, but it's worth the wait. Next comes the Guinness. Pour it in and let it cook with meat. The Guinness imparts a deep, robust flavor that pairs perfectly with the richness of the beef. Let the flavors meld and enhance each other. Don't forget the veggies. Opt for hearty vegetables that can stand up to the slow cooking process. Add these to your stew and let everything simmer together. With those steps, you have now prepared a beef and Guinness stew that's a meal in itself. It's more than food, it's an experience. As we transition from our rich and hearty beef and Guinness stew to the zesty, cheese-laden baked ziti with sausage, let's pause for a moment to consider the perfect accompaniments to these winter dishes. For the beef and Guinness stew, a side of crunchy garlic bread is a classic choice. It's perfect for mopping up the leftover stew in your bowl, ensuring you enjoy every last drop. You can easily make garlic bread at home using a baguette, butter, garlic and some herbs. Simply spread the butter-garlic mixture on your bread and bake until golden and crispy. Moving on to our Italian delight, the baked ziti with sausage. A fresh, crisp salad provides a refreshing contrast to the rich, hearty pasta. Opt for a mix of lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, and some olives. Drizzle some olive oil and squeeze a bit of lemon for that tangy kick. Now what's a meal without a dessert, right? But we'll keep that a surprise for now. Stay tuned. Remember, the joy of cooking is not just in the main course, but also in creating a well-rounded meal that delights all your senses. So, enjoy these sides with your winter dishes and elevate your dining experience. Our fourth dish is the baked ziti with sausage. To cook this Italian favorite, here's what you need to do. Start by preheating your oven to 375 degrees. While the oven is heating, cook your ziti pasta in a large pot of boiling salted water until it's just al dente. In a separate pan, brown your sausage, removing any excess fat. Next, stir in a tangy tomato sauce. Layer the bottom of a baking dish with a portion of the sauce. Combine the rest of the sauce with the cooked pasta and toss until they are well mixed. Pile half of the sauced pasta into the baking dish, sprinkle a generous helping of cheese on top, and then add the rest of the pasta. Finish off with another hearty layer of cheese. Bake it in the preheated oven for about 20 minutes or until the cheese is bubbly and golden. This hearty pasta dish, loaded with spicy sausage, tangy tomato sauce, and a generous helping of melted cheese, doesn't just fill your home with an inviting aroma, it also fills your belly with warmth and satisfaction. Now, you're ready to serve your baked ziti with sausage. As the aroma of the baked ziti with sausage still lingers in the air, and before we dive into the sweet delight of apple crisp, Let's take a cozy interlude to prepare a classic winter drink, hot mulled wine. Mulled wine is a traditional winter warmer, steeped in spices and served hot. It's the perfect drink to sip on a cold winter night, and it pairs wonderfully with both savory dishes and desserts. To make this heartwarming beverage, follow these simple steps. Remember, the key to a good mulled wine is balance. You want to taste the wine, the fruit, and the spices in harmony. So grab your favorite blanket, curl up by the fireplace and enjoy a warm mug of this delightful drink. Cheers to the cozy winter nights. At last, 
we arrive at the quintessential winter delight, the apple crisp. The tanginess of the apples harmonizing with the sweetness of the brown sugar and the crunch of the oat topping is a concerto of flavors and textures. Served warm a dollop of vanilla ice cream, it's the perfect conclusion to a winter meal. But what's the secret to making this culinary masterpiece? Let's dive right in. To prepare apple crisp, one, start with five peeled and sliced Granny Smith apples. Mix them with two tablespoons of lemon juice, three quarters cups of granulated sugar, and two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Two, for the topping, blend three quarters cups of brown sugar, one half cup of all-purpose flour, one half cup of oats, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and one half cup of cold cubed butter until it becomes crumbly. Three, layer the apple mixture in a baking dish, top with the oat mixture, and bake for about 45 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, or until the top is golden brown and the apples are tender. And there you have it, your very own homemade apple crisp. In summary, we've journeyed through a world of comfort foods perfect for the winter season. We started with the creamy, comforting chicken pot pie soup, moved on to the sweet and savory butternut squash risotto, savored the hearty beef and Guinness stew, indulged in the robust baked ziti with sausage, and ended on a sweet note with the classic apple crisp. These dishes promise to warm your cockles and make the winter season a culinary delight. As the frost forms on the windows and the nights draw in, take comfort in the kitchen where a world of winter dishes awaits. Voice over. Now folks, before we wrap this up, we have one last thing to share. If you've enjoyed this journey through winter's culinary delights and are eager for more, we invite you to join our community. It's as simple as hitting that subscribe button. By subscribing, you'll be the first to know when we release new content. From hearty winter dishes to refreshing summer treats. So why wait? Click on the subscribe button now and let's continue this culinary adventure together. Remember, every season is a new opportunity to explore exciting flavors and create wonderful memories in the kitchen. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in our next video.